and get ready for more lefties content with my next guest who is playing a dangerous game with leftist agitators in Chicago. Here he is starting a chant with these clowns before revealing to them that he is in fact pro-Israel. D.A.T. D.A.T. You gotta get behind the bikes, please. What's up, everybody? Behind the bikes, not in front of the police. My name is Ami. I gotta tell you right now, Army is there be a difference the bikes. between Genocide Joe and Kamala Killer? No! I got one thing to say to you people. I'm Israel, I'm Israel, I'm Israel, guy. Oh, good Lord, he's going to get himself hurt again. Joining me now from the Democratic National Convention in Chicago is journalist and documentary filmmaker Ami Horowitz. Ami, you've already been assaulted by anti-Israeli activists this year when you had the uh, temerity to turn up with an American flag. Tell me about what is happening in the streets of Chicago right now. Yeah, look at that video. Uh, God, God, that guy was an idiot. What, what was... What was he thinking? Uh, you know, look, you're either caught up in the moment, right? I saw an opportunity. And I'll, I'll just tell you when, how it went down, a little background of that. But this, there's, you know, look, this is not hyperbole. This is not make us making, you know, uh, um, uh, words up that are actually more dramatic than they actually are. If you walk around, I ask people, I interview these people. They said to me, we are pro-Hamas. In fact, one guy had a sign that said, we should arm Hamas, not Israel. When I asked them, should we see the destruction of the Jewish state, they emphatically said yes. So when I saw the guy who was running this rally, the main pro-Hamas rally at the DNC in front of the Israeli consulate, and he was chanting, kill the cops. He was chanting, destroy Israel. And of course, he was also chanting how much he hated Kamala Harris and Joe Biden, right? Make no mistake about it. Her coming up to where she was, her, her elevation maybe even a, you know, kind of a coup to take over and push out Joe Biden has created no love among these radicals. Make no mistake about it. They hate her still. They are still not going to vote for her because look, she said very clearly, I'm the last person in the room, right? She has taken ownership of all of Joe Biden's policies, good and bad, mostly bad. Um, they realize that. So when they, when she says, hey, uh, and she tries to suck up to them and meet with the Dearborn, Michigan uh, mayor secretly, by the way, so nobody knew about it. Uh, when 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 Walt uh, has has talked about how a, a an imam in his area who was an October seventh enthusiast, ha he spoke with him five times publicly, called him a master class teacher. This stuff has actually not moved the meal for these people. They are animals out there attacking the police. Um, and by the way, I got to say, I got to give it up to the Chicago Police Department. They are not taking crap. They are pushing these guys back. They are not, unlike the Good. police in Minneapolis during Waltz, we gave them roof to breathe. The Chicago police have got this stuff locked down. I got to say, I was very impressed by it. I went to all the riots across the country. They did a great job. So, yeah, no, there's chaos in the streets. But they I are mean not going for Kamala it Harris. Well, I'm not sure about that. They're certainly not going to vote for Donald Trump because he's as pro-Israel as they come. So in the end, and this is the argument the Democrats are making to them, is that what else are you going to do? If you don't vote for us, that's effectively a vote for Donald Trump, even if you stay away and don't vote that day. And I wonder whether that was behind Joe Biden uh, having sympathy for these protesters. Damn. The civilian suffering of the Palestinian people and finally, finally, finally deliver a ceasefire and end this war. Those, trust, those protesters out in the street, they have a point. Ami, you said the protesters out on the street have a point. Uh, we had Barack Obama speak tonight at the DNC. We know what his Middle East policy was. We know what the Biden-Harris administration position has been. And it's no surprise that these protesters feel emboldened. Yeah, no, look, there, there's no question that they are desperate to try to get these people to vote for them 
on this election, right? Then particularly in Michigan, right? That's kind of where they're saying, hey, um, if we lose these votes, we may lose Michigan. Um, and also in Pennsylvania, there's quite a, there's quite a few of them. Um, the reality mm -hmm. is, of course, they're being emboldened. Absolutely. Look, the, that clip you showed, that's the real good people on both sides clip, right? Not not the BS one they made about yeah. uh, Donald Trump you mentioned before. Their signs are clear. This, they're not hiding the ball here. When he's talking about they have a good point, explain to me what point you're referring to. Because when I was with them, they were calling for the destruction of the state of Israel. And by the way, they were crapping on you too, Genocide Joe, as they call them, or Killer Kamala, as mm -hmm. they call her. I don't think you're right. When I was talking to these protesters about, are you going to vote for Kamala? They all said no. And I asked them, this is going to, this, this might lead to a Trump victory. They don't care. They want to see the destruction of our system. And they, when they're, they were chanting, by the way, not just down with Israel, down with the cops. They were chanting down with the DNC, down with the Democrats. They are not down with the Democrats. That's for sure. Okay, well, we'll see. We'll see how those votes go. Um, you don't have compulsory voting in America, so you do have the option to stay away. In Australia, it's a different system. If we, if we don't turn up to vote, we get fined. Uh, that's an issue for another day. But is that true? The radicals aren't just outside. It is true. That's that's. We've got compulsory voting in this country. Uh, preferential voting, very different system to yours. Um, but. The radicals aren't just in, in the streets, Army. There, there's plenty of radicals inside the, the DNC venue. And giving an insight into how far left the Democrats have veered in recent years, we've learned that the head of a prominent social justice group, that's what they call themselves, who has published an essay calling for de decriminalising of terrorist group Hamas, has visited the White House multiple times this year. That's according to official logs. Joyce Aljoni's group has also called for the defunding of police forces and the elimination of immigration agencies. Uh, why would a character like this have access to the White House? And who are they meeting with? What sort of influence are they having? I just find it astonishing that people who are this far, well, to the left, to the right, they're just, in my mind, borderline extremist, why are they getting access to, to the Biden administration and, and to the White House? Yeah, I don't, I don't think it's borderline extremists. I think these are extremists. I don't think there's any, let's, let's not pull our punches yeah. here. Um, <laughs> look, I, I think it, you could look at it from a, a, a point of view of, um, hey, we're giving them the benefit of the doubt. Or like that, there, or you're going to, from the point of view of there's a real problem and the call is coming from inside the house. Look, if you want to give the benefit of the doubt, and this is not really the benefit of the doubt, this is also crass and terrible. Um, their, their viewpoint is um, electoral, purely electoral, which is hey, we need to win this race and we will take votes from whoever we can get them from. And that means we're going to cater and kowtow the pro Hamas wing of this party. We will do so. And that's to say that they don't believe it. That's to say they're just trying to make a political calculation here. There's another reading of this, it's which is, and I don't think this is Joe Biden, right? I do think this is Kamala and it's 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 some other people, the extremists within. Look, again, Biden isn't running the, the show. He's not, he's not really president, right? So you have to ask the question, who's making the invitations? I don't think it's Joe Biden, right? He's not with us. He is no longer with us. So you have to ask the question, who are actually putting these invitations out to these radicals um, who are really taking the meetings. And we don't know the answer to that. Um, but the, yeah, but the truth is, yeah, this there is, is the problem, Army. We, we, this is the problem. We don't know who in the in administration is actually pulling the strings because we know it's not Biden who's making the key decisions here. Army Horowitz, stay safe. We'll speak to you again soon. Always a pleasure. Thank you.